Hammond. What? What do you think the chances are of it actually working? It'll work. It's just that, you know, when we do these big things, they usually end in some sort of massive disaster. I quite like this one to work. It's a bit difficult to believe, but as of the time of this recording, the Top Gear Space Shuttle Challenge remains the most powerful privately launched rocket in all of the history of the United Kingdom, at least as far as rockets that launch from the UK are concerned. Indeed, this is actually more powerful than any rocket of any kind, at least on the commercial side, that's flown from Western Europe, period. Amazingly, even the Spanish PLD Miura 1 had only about half the thrust of Top Gear's Reliant Robin contraption. That is kind of an indication of the sorry state of Western European rocketry, at least in terms of the size of the rockets that have flown in the past. Sure, there have been lots of sounding rockets, but in terms of bigger rockets that can carry substantial payloads, there's been nothing. But all of that is about to change forever in the Shetland Islands. And what has just happened recently, and this footage is utterly fantastic, is Rocket Factory Augsburg and the RFA-1 are poised to make history. Two, one, zero. Engine one ignited, good RPM. Engine two ignited, good RPM. So all due respect to the talented people who put the Top Gear Space Shuttle together in a mere 12 days, but RFA-1 is a proper rocket. Each of its Helix engines has 100 kilonewtons worth of thrust. The entire Top Gear contraption had about 70 kilonewtons worth of thrust. So we're talking about 12 times the thrust given the fact that this rocket has nine of these engines with an ISP of 325 seconds as opposed to the Top Gear Space Shuttle when the solid rocket boosters had an ISP of maybe 12, 13 seconds, something like that. So finally, Europe is getting a real rocket and real engines as well. Let's go ahead and check one of these things out. Crank up the volume. Unlike the Raptor, this Helix engine runs off of RP-1 in liquid oxygen, not off of methyl ox, but it does use staged combustion just like the Raptor. And the gases from an oxygen-rich pre-burner are fed into the main combustion chamber after driving the turbo pump, and therefore the fuel is more completely burned, increasing Helix's efficiency by about 7%. And overall, this translates into 30% 
percent more payload capacity for the RFA1 micro launcher. Although, in my opinion, micro launcher is a bit of a misleading term because we are talking about a rocket that can haul quadruple the payload of the Rocket Lab Electron up to low Earth orbit. This is something that will be able to directly compete with SpaceX rideshare on the Falcon 9, given the incredibly low price that RFA is looking to launch this rocket. As little as $5 million per launch, maybe even less than that, for 1.2 metric tons, that really is a fantastic alternative for a wide variety of customers in Europe who don't want to ship their cargoes across the Atlantic. And amazingly enough, RFA has customers for the first couple of launches. Here's a list of the customers for the second test flight of RFA-1, which by the way are being funded by the German Space Agency, so they're not having to pay for this flight, but still, they're putting their payloads at risk, which kind of says something for their confidence for this launcher. You have the Midas program from DL Air Cologne, and that's a project designed to test smart materials in microgravity. Then you have the Space Mast Camera, which is a deployable camera mast mounted directly to the Redshift OTV of RFA-1. The Redshift, by the way, is sort of a kick stage for the RFA-1 rocket. Then you have the Platform 9 from Endurosat in Bulgaria. This is actually the ninth satellite to fly for this particular company. You can probably guess that from the name Platform 9, but what it does is it offers a shared service to a variety of different satellite companies to put their payloads onto one satellite so you don't have to have as many satellites in orbit in order to carry out a variety of different functions. You also have the Vibes Pioneer satellite from Hochschule Bremen. You're actually watching a clip from those folks at the beginning of this segment as well as right now. Then you have the P W3 Sat3 from the University of Warsaw in Poland. Then you have the Flamingo satellite from Vioma, another German company. Then you have the 3Cat8 from the Universitat Politecnica de Catalunya, and I've probably mispronounced a lot of that. I'm sorry, my Spanish is not that great. Then you have the Move Beyond from the Technische Universität at War EV. Not sure what that stands for but that's another German company another German satellite bus system so eight different customers on the second flight of RFA-1 and there are also customers on the first flight don't have quite as much information on that but I'll be getting it for you as launch date approaches very exciting stuff developing in Shetland. A blossoming of a true homegrown European launch industry that finally, after all this time, makes the Top Gear space shuttle look like what it actually was. Ambitious, but rubbish. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Also, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. That's one of the big ways that I'm going to be able to get to Shetland to actually cover this launch this summer. And of course, you also receive an increasing amount of exclusive content. I'm releasing another video this week on Patreon. This one about the history of nuclear rockets. A frustrating thing that actually makes me rather angry. So so make sure to check that out if you're interested in joining our Patreon community. All the details are in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space.